Hello everybody, Steve here, and what I have for you today is this Brinks laminated 40 millimeter padlock. Kind of a nice little padlock. I can you can get this kind of cheap at at Walmart, for example. There's the keyway, and here's the key. It's just a nice little four pin lock. It does work, and the reason I have this out is because in when I first started learning how to pick obviously you know you're learning with a clear plastic lock like this and and this has what are called standard pins in it and then you kind of move up into something like this master lock another four pin lock that has standard pins in it <clears throat> and when after a little while you kind of have to move into something that's a little bit more high security and having uh, instead of having standard pins having different things like like and I started hearing the term spool pins and serrated pins and you know gin bottles all kinds of different terms and stuff like that talking about the different pins and so I'm like so at first it's like well this is going to be a good introduction to learning how to pick spools and obviously <clears throat> there are other locks that are really good with picking spools and a little bit more hard to security kind of like a master lock 140 or something like that so anyway I started out by getting one of these after after getting the master lock number three down working on this little 40 millimeter Brinks lock and I kind of got a layout here of what the pinning in this I don't, obviously I haven't taken this lock apart I can't really gut that or anything like that but I brought out uh, some pins I've gotten from Sparrow's uh, reload kit and <clears throat> the, this is kind of what I see the pinning on this lock is. At first, all the key pins are standard pins, and pin number one is a regular or standard pin, and the rest are all spool pins. And <clears throat> so these aren't the exact pins that are in this lock, but pretty much a good guess. So, what does it take? to pick this lock. Here's the key for it. You can see how you have a higher pin there in the middle and the rest are kind of lower. It does work very well. And I found that this lock picks. After a while you kind of learn the binding order and I figured that out pretty quickly and so I'll just go right straight through the binding order that I learned and I put just a regular old uh, wiper blade insert tension wrench in at the top and then I just have this Peterson's short hook here and I just go straight all the way back to pin 4 and I lift that up gotta have of course when the camera comes on things don't cooperate so there's pin 4 I, I don't know if you noticed that a little bit of movement on my finger. And if, let's go back to the beginning at first, and so you can see how how sloppy this is, because it is binding up on this standard pin in the first chamber, right from the beginning. <clears throat> and you can see how sloppy that lock is, how much that core turns just by doing that. So I'll put a little bit of tension on, and I'll go straight back to pin four and I'll pop that one lift that one up and I get a little bit of click a little bit of movement there and then I'll do pin one I could do pin two or pin one it doesn't matter but pin one gives me some really good feedback and shows me what a spool does so when I click on pin one oh. I didn't do a very good job of doing that. Let me start over again. Cameras are 
are very deadly to picking locks. There's pin four, pin one. Come on. Okay, yeah. Well, you can kind of see how this core is torn quite a bit. I kind of have a little bit of a mark there where the core was sitting straight up right there. You can see how much that is. And so what we were in is we're in a false a false uh, set right there. And then when I pick on pin 2, you can see that I get a little bit of counter rotation. Click it and it pops right open. And if you didn't notice that I didn't even touch pin 3. That's because because of the tolerances of this lock pin 3 is very high so I don't even have to do anything with that to set it. <clears throat> so let's go get o go over some of the things that I saw. Well first of all um, got this little diagram. I actually I've seen this before and then I saw one of uh, lock picking legends videos and he had brought this up so I just did a <clears throat> just did a screenshot on it and so this is what's happening in this first pin pin number one right at the beginning of the lock when I'm binding on a standard pin So this would be what it looks like binding at rest where you're not getting much movement and it's just binding. This of course you have a lot of sloppiness on this lock so it turns a little bit but it's basically looking like this. And then once I set it then it will turn. But because because it does fall into a false set what happens is is you fill the spools in there after that. and. <clears throat> It doesn't matter what kind of uh, high security pins you're talking about. You can kind of see it when it falls into that false set. Then you can kind of see that it's a kind of a spoolish type of fill. And so what's happening there is before I do that, when it's binding on this first pin, these spool pins are just sitting like this at rest. And then when I fall, fall into the false set, it actually gives me this core movement and the spool pin is twisted in that chamber and still binding in there but it just kind of twisted and then if I have a, a spool that doesn't really seem like it acts like a regular pin you know there's a spool in there but it still acts like a regular pin it still pops open kind of like the pin 4 here it's just kind of uh, sitting at the bottom of the spool here the core is kind of sitting right there and binding right against the edge of that of that spool <clears throat> and so then it just feels like just an axe just like a regular standard pin so that false set is what that looks like and even when you have something a little bit um, <clears throat> a little bit different like a t-pin you still get that false set just like that and that's one of the main reasons why you get that false set is just because that pin is twisted in there and it's still binding in there and then when you start pushing that back up you're actually straightening that spool pin you're straightening up so for example get a bigger something bigger here so if you have the pin that's sitting really like this as you're pushing it up it just kind of pushes up <clears throat> and straightens it out and that's why you get the counter rotation and then you get the pin set like this or it doesn't show where it's but anyway you base that's when you get the pin set so the Brinks 40 millimeter lock is a really good introduction to security pins. And so let's take a stay, stay, stay up there, stay up there. Okay. So let's take a closer look at some of these these pins that we can get. So obviously I've shown you what these spool pins look like, and I've bought out some other 
uh, security pins out of the sparrows, different sparrows, pinning kits, reload kits, and uh, Christmas tree sets, and all those kind of things. So let's take a look at those. I'm not going to sit here and go through and name them all because that would take too long. But you, obviously down here at the bottom, these are some of the basic um, security pins that you see a lot. Here's just a regular standard pin for comparison, and then you have a spool pin. And then you'll have a pin with serrations. And then you'll have this mushroom type pin right there. And here's some others. This is, you can even see this is a serration one, but it has serrations all the way up. And then you have these pieces, these pins that look like chess pieces there. And then you have these Christmas pins. So you got a gin bottle and snowman type thing and Christmas crackers and Christmas tree ones and stuff. So you have these different pins here. And then you have some of these <coughs> these munition pins. So you have some that look like bullets and and shotgun shells and things like that. So these are all just kind of different types of security pins that you can find in different locks um, <clears throat> mainly when you see uh, obviously you see some of these standard ones in in stock locks locks that are stock that come that come from the manufacturer that way and sometimes even the manufacturer does throw out some other surprises some some manufacturers are known for different pins like and uh, <clears throat> and you'll find these pins even in, you know, some master locks, and we'll have some in there a little bit higher security locks, and and even some simple locks will even have some of these spool pins. So you'll see these locks in different ways, different variations. And when you start getting into some of these pins that people make, they'll have certain names for them and stuff, and. Excuse me. So anyway, I just wanted to bring that out and show you what uh, what this Brinks 40 millimeter lock had taught me when I first started picking, learning how to pick higher security and picking spool pins. I love picking spool pins more than anything else right now because, and the main reason why is because I do get that feedback. I get a false set and get a lot of that feedback and stuff and and also another thing is is yeah I kind of stay up there anyway so I kind of emphasize a lot of things a lot of these pins that you find in driver pins and some of these same things can also be found in some of the um, key pins as well for example I have uh, some of my American 1100 locks. You'll find serrations both in the key pin and the driver pin, as well as spools. And some some of them have spools and serrations on the same pin. So, and the main reason why you might see serrations in the bot in the key pins is is if you accidentally so you have you'll have a series of serrations on the top and in the key pin, and you won't know exactly where that where that binds this is kind of a mass but it doesn't really so here's a partially set serrated pin here and you'll see how every time that you fall into one of these grooves you're going to feel a click and you're thinking you're setting the pin and even when you get to the correct Right, you might actually bump it or you might actually keep on pushing it because you're not sure if you've gotten to it the to the um, <clears throat> you it, where you've actually set the pin or not and so then you actually end up oversetting the pin you so you're uh, an overset is when you've pushed that key pin too high and so now your key pin is binding and so that's that's why they will put some of those security pins in in the um, in the key pins in order to catch those 
um, overset pins and think that you're in an overset. So anyway, um, I wanted to bring that out and show you kind of an introduction to picking spools and they can be a lot of fun and give you a lot of feedback and obviously when I when you learn learn it really quick I mean I can on this lock I can hit the first pin right off and fall into that fault set but um, then I can pick number two and get that pick but then I've noticed with this lock if I try to go and pick number three it doesn't doesn't move at all and then I pick try to pick number four and you might get some movement sometimes you don't and now I've overset something and so then it doesn't <laughs> doesn't want to go so with this one the binding order is important <clears throat> where you can pick pin four then pin one then pin two and you're open and that's all it takes but anyway well that's all I have for today so um, if you have any comments please uh, leave them below and make sure you give a thumbs up like this video and definitely subscribe and, and thank you very much for watching and have a good day